Okay, so um, I'm going to make a few little screencasts here and talk you through Lightroom and what you need to know about Lightroom um, before I even get started. Let's see, what do I want you to know about Lightroom here? I'm going to open up the Find a window. Um, let's see, one, I want you to know that Lightroom is kind of like using Adobe Bridge and using Adobe Photoshop all in one. Uh, when I say Photoshop, actually the truth is it's more like Camera Raw, but uh, that's a geek point. But the idea is that Lightroom is a place where you can organize all of your pictures as well as edit your pictures, okay? The way that we have been using uh, Bridge and Photoshop, we use Bridge to organize and Photoshop to edit, and Lightroom is kind of combining those features together. Um, before, so it, in that way, basically Lightroom creates a database, all right? Your photos are not actually stored in Lightroom. I want to make that very clear. Lightroom doesn't hold the photo. Lightroom is a, a catalog that you are creating, and that catalog then references the photo. So the first thing you want to do is come up with a decent structure for how you are storing your photographs, okay? So for example, you can see, just look at my little uh, finder window here, and you can see that I've got Here's a hard drive labeled 2014. Here's one labeled 2018. Another 2018. So this one's back up. This one's not. 2019, 2019 back up. I've got a bunch of other drives around here too. But here, for example, in 2019 and 2019 back up, these are the same thing. Okay? They're two different drives. 2019 is sort of my working drive. And then every time I add photos to it, I then back it up to this 2019 backup, and then every so often I separate those two things. So the backup drive is in a separate location. Um, I know it might seem a little paranoid, but you should be a little paranoid. <laughs> Your drives are going to break. The internet's going to go down if you're trying to do things cloud-based. Like There's so many different ways that you can lose your files. So you want to make sure that you have them in at least two, if not three, separate safe places, okay? Uh, usually what I end up doing is I end up taking the, the backup drive and then duplicating that and then putting that in a different location entirely to make sure that I still have a safe backup. Uh, nowadays, we talked a little bit last week about how you could use the cloud. It's... I. I'm going to leave that up to you. I am not, uh, I'm not experienced enough using the cloud now to swear by it. I do think that many of my concerns in the past, the idea that there's not enough storage space, the idea that it's too slow, maybe that is no longer the case. I just don't know. So I'm going to err on the side of having my duplicate hard drives here. Now inside this drive, 2019, this is my current drive. And I know it's not 2019 anymore, but you'll see that's just the name of the drive because I set it up in 2019. And inside there, you can see I've got some older stuff and I have this new, new 2020 folder. In my case, I then create different categories, okay? Business is for things I shoot for money. Life as well, everything else that I shoot. I'm going to go here to the life folder and just show you that here I also, when I add photos to my, um, to my folders, I do so by year underscore month. And so if I go here to 2001, this is everything I added in January of 2001. Now, I do want you to see, let's see, here is an individual photo file, and then you'll see below it is what's called an XMP file. If you look at this folder, 2004, the reason I show you this one is because you can see the same thing, the numbers and the XMP files, 
until there we go right there okay the reason that these don't have that xmp file the xmp file is what we call a sidecar file it is the equivalent of um well let me say it's generated by lightroom when lightroom is used to edit photographs now the reason that these up top have that xmp file and these down low don't have that xmp file is simply because these down low I just downloaded those yesterday. I have not imported them into Lightroom at all. After I import them into Lightroom, that XMP file will be generated. So that sidecar file is another way of working non-destructively. Think of it like a post-it note. So when you open your picture up and you edit your picture, instead of generating adjustment layers like we were doing in Adobe Photoshop, the big, fat, non-destructive version of adding adjustment layers, um, remember how that really can increase the size of your file? Doing this right here, it's just a tiny little file that's like an instruction sheet. So in my mind, it's a post-it note where you write down make it 20 points brighter, lighten the highlight, change this, change that, etc. And then you just stick it to the file. It's like a little parasitic file that is stuck to it. So the technology here in uh, Lightroom and also within Adobe Camera Raw is this style of sidecar file based non-destructive workflow. Um, I don't think if there's anything else that you need to know. Oh, and I do, I do want to just clarify. And that XMP file, it changes. Every time you edit your photos, that XMP file changes. And I have a list of um, sort of written out how I organize my files here in this post. But I think I just covered everything that you need to know. So I'll just leave it at that.